if you have noticed, after I promise I'll pick up the pace to make YouTube video, I slow it right down. And that's because I got a new desktop PC, and I have been distracted by gaming lately. It's an old AMD PC, so let's talk about what I have learned and how I feel about gaming with the AMD GPU compared to the NVIDIA dual GPU laptop on Linux. Let's start with the spec first. The PC I got has an AMD 5700 CPU, 32 GB DDR4 dual channel RAM, and an AMD 6700 XT GPU. And being a proper Linux user, I got it secondhand. Although it has a legal version of Windows installed by the previous owner on the motherboard, I replaced it with Linux right after I brought it home. So far, I've tried Manjaro, Fedora Workstation, and Nobata on it, played Switch version of Mario Go Kart 8, Persona 5 Royale, and beat Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu with Yuzu Emulator, finished Windows version of Hogwarts Legacy, overcooked all you can eat, played Final Fantasy VII Remake, Boulder Skate, Outer Ring, Red Dead Redemption 2 on bottles, and Assassin's Creed Origins on Steam, each for more than 10 hours now, and found no issues. I didn't run any benchmark properly because this GPU is too powerful for my 4K 60Hz monitor and TV. Most of the games are average at 60 FPS most of the times. So my plan was to tinker with the game settings and see which games would be better suited for benchmarks on this channel. Let's go over some hardware related things that I have learned after gaming on this PC. First, no Nvidia GPU is awesome. Each time after installing a new distribution, as long as the first time upgraded finished, I could go directly setting up the gaming applications like Bottles and Steam, and most of the games were perfectly playable after following the guide from ProtonDB. No more potential black screen or grub modification to worry about. The only thing that I need to worry about on the system level now is installation itself. Life is so much easier this way. However, Having an NVIDIA GPU doesn't mean it is better for gaming. Newer generation hardware can still produce issues. For hardware legacy, it worked without any tinkering on this older laptop containing NVIDIA GPU, while on desktop, it crashed a lot during the loading screen. After some searching, I found that I had to change the VM max map count setting according to this GitHub page, which means I still had to spend extra time solving game-specific issues with AMD hardware. Thirdly, one less hustle doesn't mean no hustle at all. If you are using distributions like Fedora, there are still chances that the game videos can be played properly if you don't have the video codec set up. I haven't encountered this issue with any games. But DaVinci Resolve still won't work out of the box, even with AMD open source driver. Ever since I had this desktop, I have wanted to edit videos on it. But when I followed the Arch Wiki for DaVinci Resolve with Majero, there were times the system refused to boot into the graphical desktop properly, or games broke after installing the proprietary AMD GPU driver. And when I finally got to the point, where the check script said that I should be able to run the program, I was still not able to start it. Another issue is that not every Linux compatible hardware works on all distributions by default. To play games on couch, I got a cheap gaming controller from Amazon. The product page claimed it would work on Linux. It did work on Fedora and Nobata out of the box, but for Manjaro, I had to build this package from AUR in order to make it work. And with my Xbox One controller, I had to use the micro USB cable in order to make sure the controller was always connected because Bluetooth would disconnect all the time during the gameplay. 
let's go over some software-related learnings. First of all, there is no difference when it comes to gaming setup on Linux. Of course, different GPUs require different launch options. But all I needed to do on both of these machines was to copy those launch options from ProtonDB website with correct CPU and GPU filters to bottles, then start playing the game. A little trick I discovered when I was using bottles was that after finding the correct string for the game, create a shortcut in your bottle and paste the option to the shortcut setting. Then the game can start every time by simply clicking on the play button with a preset. The second issue is that I found a Nvidia GPU is still worth getting for gaming on Linux if you want DLSS. The option to turn it on is available on both Bottles and Lutris, so I guess it will also work. Unfortunately, I have no GPU that supports DLSS, so I can't test it. But I really want to because for Hogwarts Legacy, I found AMD FSR made a huge difference already. I can manage 60 FPS on high if I turn it on, but only 15 to 24 FPS if off. I can't imagine what DLSS can do if I have the proper gears. Finally, games that don't work properly on Linux are always there. For me, they are the less popular games on ProtonDB from Japan, namely Dynasty Warriors and Stainscape. I don't know if it is because I was running the Repack version through bottles. They just couldn't be launched even though they are platinum and gold on ProtonDB. After reinstalling them several times and trying several different runners on bottles with no luck, I give it up. After two months of using this PC, this is what I found. Compared to Windows, the system installation will take shorter times if you're using an AMD GPU because you don't have to download the driver and install it. But the time you save will be spent on the game tinkering depending on the game and your hardware. AMD system gives out a very similar experience compared to an Nvidia one, especially if you go for distributions like Pop! OS or Nobata which don't require separate NVIDIA driver setup. If you don't want to use those systems with NVIDIA GPU, you will need to bear the hassle of installing the driver, which is fairly easy nowadays, and the risk of having black screen during the process, which is pretty rare. However, NVIDIA GPU will potentially reward you with more features like DLSS, and ChatGPT server after you have mastered the process of setting up the driver. And that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.